than that. You do the opposite. You work in exact harmony with it. Now also we have an ozone sphere, yeah? The ozone sphere has 0 0.0004 carbon dioxide. If there was no trees, our carbon dioxide would go to the ozone sphere and this whole planet would burn. Be a ball of fire, yeah? Because of the heat, okay? So there, there is a harmony here, not just between you and the tree, but between you and the tree and the ozone sphere. Yeah? You produce around 50 million, I don't know, now maybe it's even more, 26 billion tons. We as, as humans produce 26 billion tons of carbon dioxide every year. The only reason we have this kind of vegetation, right, which is a part of whatever made the universe put it there, in order for it to make that balance between the ozone sphere and the human's existence and the carbon dioxide that they push out. That's proof that there is wisdom behind it. It's so intricate and detailed, right? Okay. If the carbon dioxide well, in the ozone by sphere... Doing here, you give you yeah. support. <laughs> if you want... Yeah. Yeah. Carbon, yeah. Quite well. The carbon, carbon dioxide yeah. in the ozone sphere itself is very precise. I told you to the precisest measure, 0 0.0004, right? If it was more or less, it's either you will be too cold or be too hot. Right? Sure. Similarly, looking, this is the fine tuning argument, the one I'm talking about, right? If the sun was closer, you will burn. If it was further away, you will freeze. If the moon was closer, you'll have waves. You get the point, right? So there is a balance there. It requires wisdom, right? And everything works in harmony in the universe. Everything works in harmony, right? Sure. We are the only ones that are trying to go outside the harmony. You know? yeah. Outside of us, everything is working fine. You get the point? Yeah. If you take human beings out, everything is working exactly. in harmony. This is my argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, so that's what we're saying. We're saying that harmony requires. Every little detail of the universe has uh, has harmony, has a role, has a function. How many wisdom and knowledge do you require to do that? That's the point I'm making. Sure. Uh, but then again, the, I think from an atheistic point of view, it can't be understated what you just said, which is if we take human beings out, everything works in harmony. Yes. Absolutely. But Islam, Christianity, Judaism, yeah. all of these things, they are human invention. That's my belief. They are. It's a claim, though. They, huh? Claim we can deal with, right? Because he just made a claim. I believe. Have you read the Quran? Uh, I'm currently. This one. Two thirds <laughs> of the way through the Quran. Okay. When you read the Quran, did Wasn't you read it? I was expecting it to become such a relevant uh, thing I'd need today. <laughs> so did I'm you on read? The spot. <laughs> it's the biggest growing religion, you know. It did is. you read? Did you read it like you read like a book or a newspaper, or did you read it? with thinking what is the intent behind every verse? I read it the same way I've read the Bible and the Torah, no which is unlike I would read a okay. fictional novel or a magazine, okay. knowing how important it is okay. and how... Good, great, you know. great, great. Now, would you say before finishing the Quran, can you place a judgment over the Quran? What, before reading it? No. But before you just done that. Oh, uh, before completing it, okay. Um, before finishing the book. In terms of my own personal... Not only, by the way, sorry sorry to cut you, not only the Qur'an, there's also the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad, sure. the, there's many narrations of the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, would I... Understanding the, 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 the Islamic point of view. Before understanding it, can you make a judgment over it? I would argue logically no, because okay. I don't think it's fair to make judgments of anything we agree without with you. some comprehensive understanding. We agree with you. We have, we have in Islam a, a rule in jurisprudence. It's called al hukmu an shay'i far'un an tasawwarihi. Placing a judgment over something is based on you picturing and imagining and understanding that thing. So first you have to understand what is that thing in order for you to place a ruling over it, right? So if you agree with me on that, then you cannot say that Islam, etc, etc are man-made religions. Okay. You agree? But they're written in man-made languages. And That's fine, we agree with that as Muslims, we believe that. <laughs> right. That doesn't, that doesn't take away from the fact whether they're inspired, divine, or they're from a creator or not. No, I suppose not. But at the same time, my argument with... with the only way you would understand language is if, it's the, if they're written in man-made language. Yeah, for Otherwise, sure, absolutely. But I was having this discussion, so I was talking with uh, our friend there earlier about Julian James. Uh, who, stick to, stick to no, no, let him, let him, let him finish what I'm saying. Yeah. That was on my mind, yeah. let him, let him. But with with regards point. to the importance yeah. of language yeah. and, yeah. and how yeah. language okay. and text plays its part yeah. in all of these discussions sure, 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 sure. and the comprehension of religion. Sure. Uh, so if you, I don't know if you've ever read The Origin of Consciousness and The Breakdown in the Bicameral Mind by Julian James, Tony Jackson. If, if not, I recommend Not it. specifically by him, no. Okay, so the... the I read about consciousness, but not his works. Sure, so, the, so his theory, which to be fair, has been like hotly debated and many people don't ascribe to it. But the theory is that, um, so once upon a time, we had, in a monologue, we had consciousness uh, around the point 
from, you know... Can I stop you there? We have consciousness. Where did it come from? I'll tell you something about Buddhism, yeah? They talk about consciousness all the time. Uh -huh. I go to them, where did consciousness come from? They say, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Point is, look, in the end, if you're so fascinated with something, to the limit that, that people don't even know what consciousness is, they're having debates over the definition of consciousness, right? You have the whole problem of consciousness in science because it's a metaphysical thing. Then one person is not asking this fascinating thing, how did it come into existence? Yeah. That's to me is very strange to me, right? right? Quran says something very beautiful, yeah? You read the Quran, you, did you read from chapter two onwards? Yeah. What does the Quran say about the soul? I mean, you read I, it, I'm not, I'm not chapter gonna, 17. I'm not gonna be able to quote the entire thing. <laughs> like, I feel like I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm just joking with you. <laughs> chapter new, 17 yeah. of the Quran says, <laughs> Yes, Aluna can they ask you about the soul. Soul is consciousness, uh, more conscious. Soul is, is to us even more than consciousness, but you can roughly define it as consciousness, yeah? They ask you about the soul. Say the soul is from the affairs of my Lord. Okay. And you have been only given a little bit of knowledge about it. Sure. When Allah says given a little bit of knowledge, that means until the end of time. Because given is a past tense, yeah? So until the end of time, we will only have a little bit of knowledge regarding consciousness because it's metaphysical. It's not something you can put under a microscope, you can read and you can study, yeah? you can measure, you can't. So you, uh, it's a metaphysical, it's beyond your scope in a sense, right? It's from the scope of the creator, which is also metaphysical, right? So when you have something so fascinating, that proves, comes back to the point I was making. It shows the, the, the amount of wisdom and knowledge that thing had to create such a thing. That we even not even, even not even able to comprehend it and understand it, right? So that proves the point I'm making about the knowledge. So the knowledge is a necessary thing. The power is a necessary thing. Not being restricted by time and space is a necessary thing. Restrictions, having as restrictions upon you. Why? Because time and space continues according to science started with the universe. So God created time and space or whatever made the universe, if you don't want to use the word God, whatever made the universe, which is so far powerful and, and wise and, and, and knowledgeable, also not, is not restricted by the laws of time and space because he made them. Okay? And whatever made the universe is independent of the universe in order for it to bring it into existence, right? It has to be before it to make it. So it's independent of it. It doesn't need it, it doesn't require it. It maintains it, it created it, right? And then you have that it's one. Otherwise, it's not independent. Otherwise, it's not the creator because someone else created it, right? So you have these attributes. One, independent, uh, knowledgeable, powerful, and not restricted by time and space. What would we call that being? Or that entity, or that whatever you want to call it. What would you call it? How do we refer to it as humans? Well, I, I, I feel as though you're... Do you see a problem with the reasoning? Tell me. Reasoning. The, the only problem that I see... Yeah. Is that you are... You're giving human attributes to something so inhuman and so completely beyond our realm of comprehension. How do you know that? How do I know? It's beyond our realm of, of, of comprehension. But what do you assume? Because it has an attribute that we have in a lower sense, it means that that's anthropomorphic to it. Sure. Why do you assume that? But, but using so, uh, your example of Can I give, sorry, sorry, can, can I just okay. I give, I give, and I'll let, you, I'll let you say what you want. But I just wanted to make this point. Like Allah's knowledge, for example, mm -hmm. Allah's knowledge, that what we believe as Muslims, Allah knows the past, present, future, yeah? Allah knows not only past and present and future, Allah knows the events that didn't take place. If they were to take place, how they would be? Now think about that as a bit deep, yeah? It's like this book didn't fall, yeah? If it falls, Allah knows what would happen. Allah knows all the scenarios that didn't happen. If they happen, how they would be, yeah? So that knowledge cannot be in any way, shape or form like the knowledge that we say as, as us as humans. Allah's knowledge was always with Him. Allah, our knowledge is given, right? Allah's, Allah's knowledge uh, it's not only eternal and all comprehensive, it's a perfect attribute of Allah. So he didn't need a teacher, he didn't need uh, to read books, he didn't need... We had to attain the knowledge, yeah. right? So our knowledge in no way, shape or form is like Allah's knowledge. So we have something which we say, Allah, the Quran says, Laysa, which you have come across by the way when you're reading, it says, Laysa Do you know why I'm making this point? Because I say to people, you have, if you really want to give something, it's due right. You have to read it with understanding. Right? For sure. So then you have in your mind, you understand at least some of the positions of the Quran have, right? So Quran says, There is nothing like unto him. So there is nothing like unto Allah. The attributes that Allah has is not similar in any way, shape or form to the creation. Sure. Right? So knowledge and all of these attributes I was making, they're all unique in their own ways when it comes to Allah. 
right? There is no way, shape, or form like our attributes, our human attributes. Therefore, they're not anthropomorphic. Okay. Yeah. But Allah gave us some of these attributes, and that's a part of the honor that Allah has given us. He's given us a limited form of these attributes. But some of the honor that He gave, given us, not given the animals, right? Animals don't have knowledge and wisdom and civilization. He's given us that. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمِ We have honored the children of Adam. But why us? Good question. And that why deals... Why the animals? That's good. That, that's a good question. First thing we have as a, as a general premise, we say لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألوا. We don't ask Allah why He does what He does. We are the ones asked. Why? Because we are the creation, He's the creator. And He's all wise, we're not all wise. He's all knowing, we're not all knowing. So by default, when He tells us something, it has to come by default through absolute knowledge and wisdom. Can we know the absolute knowledge and wisdom? That's a different point. Maybe we can know some of it, maybe we can't, right? Depending on what is the topic. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, Allah is, one of his attributes is Al-Khaliq, creator. And he repeatedly creates, continuously creates. Yeah, because Allah continuously creates creation, we're not as, as some people think we are the best creation of God and things like that. That's a Christian understanding. In the Quran, which is answering that point, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that we uh, and we've given them honor over many of the things we created. Not all, many. That means what? By definition, that means there is things more favored than us. And there is things less favored than us. He also says in chapter 16 of the Quran, after he mentioned some of the creation of the earth, he said, And he creates what you don't know. So there's creations that we don't even know. So we're not that, that just the one creation that God created. And, he just looks after. No, Allah creates, creates and creates and creates. And there's creations that we don't know. He said he placed creation within the heavens and within the earth. So I'm trying to make sure that I interpret this correctly. Yeah. So with that in mind, mm -hmm. the belief that uh, Allah is, is all knowing and, and um, is creating continuously yeah. and we have this much of his knowledge. And no, that's cannot, what, that was about be, the soul. That's okay. Okay. Ah. So we are given by, by Allah, um, some of his knowledge, yes. some of his knowledge, but, but we could never compare what we have to that. We cannot comprehend him fully. We couldn't comprehend it or even try to understand. So fully, we, fully, fully, we can't. So we can in the religion of Islam, you have to approach your life day to day with that in mind. So there are certain things that you may not ask, certain questions you might not think to ask, and certain things you may not do because it would be arbitrary. Because to do it would then defy the idea that Allah is all knowing. Can I answer that? It's a good point. But my, my, mm. my argument to that would I agree be, with it. I agree with my it. My argument to that... No, but before you give an argument, maybe you can allow me to put a, 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 what you call a caveat there, oh, right? Okay. <laughs> the caveat is this, yeah? But a caveat is the following. Did you see where I was going with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I know okay. where you're going. I know where you're going. That's why I'm telling you it's not fully the picture. Okay. So I'm adding the caveat so you understand it's not that way. All right. We don't just believe in blind faith. We don't just follow because the Quran tells us to follow. Yeah. First, we have a premise. The premise is, is the Qur'an from God or not? Is there evidence of the Qur'an? Or you can question and you can research and you can look at that. Is there proof the Qur'an is from, from the Creator? Right? Once you have established the Qur'an is from the Creator, once you have established it, right? Then do you by default accept what God says or not? If you have evidence to prove this book is from God, yeah? If you know absolute certainty now, you. As, as Eric, yeah? As Eric, you know, because sometimes I get the names wrong, you know? <laughs> Apologize if I do that, yeah? So Eric, you know, you know this is definitely from God, yeah? If you know this is definitely from God, wouldn't you agree then you take whatever is in it because you know it's coming from an all wise, all knowing, you have already established that point. Okay. So based on that, we do what you were describing. What we do is first, we try to reach the wisdom behind the, the, the commandments that Allah made. But we believe that there is certain things you cannot reach the wisdom. I'll give you an example. We pray five times a day. Why five? Why not six and seven and eight? If six, you'd say, why not, why not five? Yeah. If five, you get the point? Therefore, we say that's a, that's a command from God. We do it the way it was told. Why you don't eat pork? Some people say it's, not, it's dirty. No, 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 that's not our position. We don't eat pork because Allah commanded us not to eat pork. Allah knows about me more than, than anyone. Allah knows about that creation, which is pork, more than anyone else. But based on what? That I already know that that was a statement of Allah, which is not to eat pork. So once you have that premise there, then that point of blind following does not apply. 
Do you get the point? Okay. Yeah. I don't, now, now that's the caveat. You, you can, can speak also now. explain the rationales behind it or the reasoning behind not it. Not everything. But not everything. Not everything. To, but to certain extent. Yes. Sure. Because I'll tell you why. If you explain everything, you're not worshipping God, you're worshipping your intellect. Because it suits your intellect. I agree. There's a problem. Because it suits your intellect and our intellect differ. Look, if two smart people are arguing, you bring another smart person, you have a third opinion. You'll not have a solution between the two, right? But we believe revelation is what can bring people together, right? So therefore, if you just follow because it makes sense to you, you're not following God, you're arrogantly following your desires. Allah said in the Quran, have you seen the one who took his desire as his own God? Which you come across, by the way. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm not going to repeat this point again, yeah? So Allah says that the one who took his desires as his own God. Right? He said, okay, I'm not going to take your opinions once I feel satisfying. Because look, if you know everything about the wisdoms about everything, you're God, man. Because that's the God's job. If you know that, then what is the difference between you and God? It's a tough position, but I... Because you, you agree in life that there is many things you don't know, for surely. But for you sure. still accept, yeah. you still adopt, right? Mm -hmm. So why is it different when it comes to Allah? But ultimately it comes down to the same question that got me into this conversation that I've now been having for the last two hours. Not with you, but with yeah, yeah, no other problem. people. No problem. Which is why yes. Why do I not innately feel yes. the force of any deity? Why do why is it not innately within me? It is. It is, you just is it. Yeah. It is, yeah. Is it, really? <laughs> it is definitely. Have you not read that one the, way. Even, it as well. Even in the foxhole though, even when it comes down to the last moment. Yeah, and, and not, Can I show you? not on camera, okay. I don't want to go into all yeah, my yeah. personal life Even camera, if you want to say anything out, if you want to move outside of camera, we talk a little bit afterwards, it's fine as sure. well. Camera is just there, we don't, don't, it's not just like it's not there. To, to, to learn. Okay, look, sure. so direct your, yourself toward the religion of Allah, inclining to the truth. Adhere to the fitrah. Why is the fitrah? It gives us here in the fitrah, the natural inborn inclination of man to worship his creation, prior to the corruption by the natural external factors. I see. Okay. okay, so that's something we call it fitrah. Fitrah is an innate thing within every human being to recognize his creator and to know the basic right and wrong. Basic. Not everything. That's why you require guidance. Like knowing that uh, killing is bad, like incest, you cannot do this, right? This is, in, this is within the human being, born with it. Now, the fitrah, it's proven even socially. There is social science done for it. Like uh, uh, Oxford University conducted a study, 57 academics on a period of three years. They brought children from 20 different countries, atheistic countries like China and Japan and things like that. And they conduct studies and they came to the conclusion that they have an innate receptivity to, to God. There's a book written by, by a man called the, the Gospel of the Red Man. He was a Christian and he went to the Native Americans, right? And he saw their beliefs, and their beliefs are, are unique, believing in your own creator, indivisible, but very similar to the Islamic beliefs. It's almost in line with the Islamic beliefs, if you read that book, right? It was written in the 1800s, he didn't even know about Islam, that guy, right? But he just written their beliefs, and it's very similar to our beliefs, right? Uh, and you find uh, uh, islands discovered in the Amazon, people believe in, in a higher power. Every civilization in the past had some sort of form of, of an understanding of a higher deity. It's a part of our human nature, right? But then that gets corrupted with the society. Society can, can corrupt and cloud that fitrah within you, right? Yeah. So what you have to do is to read the Quran, reflect, listen to, to understanding and seek the truth for it to be unclouded gradually, right? And also you have to do something very important. I'll tell you something, you know the key, the key to believe in God is what? Imagine, what would it be? Um, what would the key to believe in God be? It's a very simple key. We're going to have a different answer. No, but what do you think? My personal opinion is that the key human motivation for belief in God is fear of death. Okay. That's a very good thing, actually, what you said. To me, to me, that's a very good point. Fear of death and more importantly, a, fear of the unknown. It's a very good, it's a very good, it's right. It's a very, like, the whole place is there, but, you know, it's a very good point, yeah? Prophet Muhammad said something beautiful, yeah? He said, Mention often more of the destroyer of pleasures. He didn't call it death, he called it destroyer of pleasures. Why? Because you, what makes your fitra gets clouded is that you're too in sync within this worldly life. Materialism, money, everything, right? So Prophet says, something is going to destroy all this, these pleasures that you're thinking about. Something is going to wipe all of these things away. 
something is going to remove all of them. And that was my turning point as a person, was thinking about death. Yes. What made me take a different step toward learning about Islam and religion and learning about my religion properly and practicing it and all of that. Was thinking about that. There is always an ultimate thing that you, everyone will, will, will go to. Allah says, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall taste death. And Allah says, Inna al-mawta ladhi tafiruna minhu fa innahu, fa innahu mulaqikum. The death you're running away from is going to meet you. Yes. Allah says, well, even if you were in, in, in castles, death will come to you. Even if you were in your beds, death will come to you. Wherever you go, it will come to you. So Allah says, that final destination. Why is it there? It's there to remind you of why you're here. You're here for a test, man. You're not here to have pleasures. Or You're here, I'm giving you a time for a reason. I'm reminding you, people dying around you, reminding you who's in here playing. He was here for a short period of time. There was a purpose behind his existence. When you go have an exam in the, in the university, they give you two hours or three hours, right? You'll have a short time for a test. That's why this life is limited. We just believe this life is a test that we, then we go to our real destination, which is the afterlife, right. which is eternal, right? So this life is only, this life is only just an, uh, 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 60 years if you live, if you live that long of, of a test, right? So that's a very excellent point. But I, what I meant was, what would, that's a, that would can make you, that's one of the keys. But do you know the ultimate key is what? Which can only make that key that you said work, is humbling yourself. Okay. If you humble yourself, because you can reach that conclusion, but you can reject the conclusion out of arrogance, right? Which a lot of people do. Humbleness is what Allah always mentions, that He will guide the people who have, and He will not guide the people who don't have. The arrogant people, Allah repeatedly says He will not guide these people. Because they don't want guidance, they're not looking for guidance. Allah says, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا When they went astray, Allah let them go astray. They chose to go astray, they chose not to, to be guided, right? Humbleness is a key. If you humble yourself, understanding what is your relationship to you, to the one who made everything, that you're just a servant of the Creator. Right? You've been placed on this earth to be tested. You're not here to just enjoy food and women and this, which is all worldly desires, which will be for a short period of time. Even when you grow, you cannot enjoy the same things you used to enjoy, right? Which is so, okay, but Islam tells you to channel it in the right yeah, way. Yeah, differently, differently. So, 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 so it's, it's humbling yourself is what is going to make you accept the truth when you find it, after the research, right? So everyone says, do your research. But we say, if you don't humble yourself after you find the truth, you will never achieve guidance. Because you didn't want the guidance, right? You sure. found it and then you said, why is this here? I don't want it, man. <laughs> I prefer to have these desires of this life, right? So humbling yourself is the key, I personally believe, humbling the, based on the Quran, humbling the, yourself is what is always lead, sincerity and humbleness is always what is going to lead you to, to the truth. Like falling on your face, then asking the Creator, wherever you are, guide me. Have you done that ever in your life? No, no, I haven't. Do you see the point? Because we say, if you believe really there's a creator, or if you, even there's a possibility there's a creator, he's able to do whatever he wants, right? So why am I turning around to people? Why am I not trying to turn around to the one who made everything as well? Try to ask him to guide me, to show me the truth, to give me signs, to, to lead me to the right path. I think I have a, a much more solipsistic philosophy, if I'm being personally honest. Yeah. Like, I don't know to what extent it's something that requires it's it's ironic because <laughs> normally when you're debating on any level with anyone of of, of a religion it, it tends to be that the atheist or the agnostics or the science community they try and argue and levy everything based on logic and ration and reason and typically the 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 religious that are debating their side tend to do everything based on two things scripture and conviction and those, you know, both of those things, well, one of them was given to them, being scripture, and the other one lives within them. Whether that was given to them, how they were raised, or where they were born, or whether it is something that they just feel within themselves. And you can't, and I was saying this earlier, watching other people debate, I was watching a, a Christian debate with a Muslim, and, and, and it was about the specific, the specific interpretations of the Quran and, and the Bible, and what does this mean and what does that mean? And I said to a friend that was stood by, they're not going to achieve anything and they're not going to get anywhere. And the reason is because there's no amount of logic and, and reason or rationale that is going to, not, neither of them are going to come away from the debate saying, you know what, he changed my mind, because it's not going to happen. You're not going to change the mind of someone who within their human spirit truly believes something. I don't think that it can, it can only be done, I think human beings, we only learn our lesson the hard way. 
really. I think we only tend to, look, me especially, yeah. we only tend to learn our lesson when it's either too late or we're right on the line. But Eric, can I stop you? It goes back to what Mohammed said, humbleness. So if sure. two people are debating and if they have inbuilt biases and they're not, not humble and they're not seeking the truth, yeah. if, if they're not going to get anywhere. If they're just there to prove a point. And also there's criteria of where things, how we can prove things. Sure. For instance, when you look at Christianity, you can easily refute it. You right. see? Yeah. See? Well, I prefer Without going into it. Yeah, yeah. because some Without people get offended. Yeah. You see, when you talk to Christian, okay. someone is becoming yeah. Christian. So when, into, speaking, so when you say to me, when you say to me, yeah. to when you say to yeah. me, when you say to me that there was a Christian debating a Muslim, yeah. question is the following. Was both of them on the same qualification level of understanding of their faith? Right? When you have someone who is a layman, Muslim, yeah. Debating with a Christian who just went to seek some answer, some questions, very difficult questions, and he's starting to use it to prove that guy doesn't know what he's talking about, right? Yeah. Then this is not really a debate. No, I agree. Yeah. This is one person. The, the playing field isn't exactly, level. and that happens yeah. a lot here by the by some of the imagine. missionaries that come here. Yeah. So therefore, I don't call it call even a debate to me, right? Because there's not even equal level of even understanding or even two good levels. Sure. So you can have responses. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two point I wanted to make, to make about that, uh, that uh, debating thing that you said. Remember what I said in the beginning? I was making the same exact point. If you have two smart people arguing, you bring a third person, you have a, a third uh, argument. Yeah. That's why we turn back to, the, to the, the revelation as a criteria. Allah says in chapter 4, verse 59, if you disagree upon something, return it to Allah and the Messenger. Right? So he gave us a criteria. It's no longer I think this, 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 he thinks this, this, that, no. In Islam, whatever matter it is, you can reach the truth. Okay. You can reach the answer. Therefore, it does not leave that level of, of uh, running away and playing around, right? Because both of you, the Creator Himself commanded you to return it to Him and to His Prophet, which explained these issues, right? Sure. Can I give him some of the material? Yeah, yeah, if you want, yeah, sure, sure. So, so therefore, that issue does not become